Welcome to the Metal Prognosis, my name is Lee, and on today's video, we are looking at the 11 Rack Guitar Effects Unit, which I've got behind here. Now, I've had this for many years now, and I've used it in lots of different projects, but I haven't featured it on this channel yet. So, let's start plugging stuff in and start having some fun. All right, now everything's plugged in and ready to go. I'll bring up the uh, editor now. Now with this editor, I've actually never really used it that much because when I uh, used to use this effects rack a lot, I just programmed in manually just purely off the unit itself. And I loaned it to a couple of friends here and there and they did the same. I think I only tried the old one ages ago uh, just to help rename them and uh, do it that way. And from what I see here, it's had a a fair few different um, <laughs> stages of evolution to it. All right, so what have we got here? We have uh, a tuner, that's handy. Uh, user options, okay, so you can always keep the cabs off. So we're using the cabs that are coming from the unit there. Uh, I'll do another video where we don't use the cabs, try third-party IRs, that could be cool. Um, digital output, headphones I'm not worrying about, amp rig out, cool, yeah, expansion pedals, that's all pretty straightforward. Now I like this how they've got all the pictures of all the different things, so now we have, if I click, yes. So here are all the different uh, pre-sets that I've uh, saved and gone through over the years, or people I know have used. So all the names are all over the place. So let's just go through a few and just see how, how it reacts and does it. Got a little weird buzz there. Not sure what that is or if we can get rid of it, but uh, that's okay. So yeah, heaps of different presets of different, no, because you always name things, whatever the project uh, you're working on. So that's all fine. Let's delve in a little bit more into it, uh, the best of what I, what I can. So that's if you want a volume pedal. Yeah, this is really, I'm pretty impressed with all these little pitches that they've got here to help you. A wah, uh, it doesn't matter about the volume pedal because I've got nothing, no f extensions hooked onto this unit at all. So it looks like you've got a phaser here that's not turned on. So what other effects do we have here? Chorus, compressors, EQs, oh, that's cool. Well, let's get a pre-EQ happening. Let's see if we can, because we're using a seven string, let's see if we can just make it a little bit more bitey. Turn it on. Yeah, not too bad, I don't mind that. Then we've got uh, distortion, which is, looks like just a straight, um, <laughs> the old 808 boost, which is fine. It's not engaged, but can we actually, ah, that's cool. So we can push this boost. Let's try it. 
don't want any overdrive. Bit up, no, no overdrive. Pump it. That's pretty cool. Then going into our amp, which I'm not sure what this is meant to be. Ah, so there's all these different amps. So we've got here vintages, uh, bass. I have used this for bass before as well. Um, I don't know what it was. I did very little research while I was actually mucking around with the 11 rack when I was using it quite frequently in the studio. So I don't know what most of these are based off on that. It was, I went pretty much off the basis of, if it sounded cool, it is cool. Let's go with it. Uh, and that was it. But no, it looks like we've got some pretty cool plexi stuff here. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, DC is meant to stand for. I'm sure someone in the comments will help out and then let me know. Yeah, lots of options there. Oh yeah, you got the set, set it to that. Oh, that's really cool. And here are the pre cabs that they've got. Yep, not sure what any of these are based on. Oh, it looks like the greenbacks. Um, yeah, B30, I don't know if that's meant to be a vintage 30. Uh, not sure what they were based on, but yeah, there's not too bad, decent amount. So let's just quickly go through some of those and see the difference. So that sounds cool, but it's changed something here. What is this? So different microphones now. So you got the SM57, the E609, uh, the R421. That's really cool. Oh, that's a 121, sorry. Uh, that's really, yeah. So change the mic. That is, uh, yeah, very impressed with this. Very impressed, that's really cool. You got uh, oh, stuff if you wanna send it through the effects loop. Different effects here, so I've got flange, which I use a lot uh, in Shadows at Bay. Uh, different compressors, uh, which is really cool because you have different compressors at different part of the chain. If you're gonna double up on them for whatever reason, that's really cool. Different EQ, so you can EQ before and post, really cool. Uh, what are all these? Ah, different type of flanges, I'm guessing. Nope, the same. So, yeah, pretty much you can rotate them and do them however you like, which is cool. Different delays, three different type of delays. I don't know why you'd need more than that, really, uh, as a basics. And two different type of reverbs you can have there. So all in all, yeah, that's pretty pretty cool. That is sounding cool, but that is pushing it a little bit too much. I think that's a little bit more user friendly for this. If we're doing a more genty type of video or trying to see how far we can push it, this graphic EQ would definitely be coming out and I'd be homing in a lot on the shaping of the tone with that. Cause yeah, that's pretty powerful for a, a well, it seems like a little thing, but I have no idea how much processing power has actually gone into it. And I keep pointing at the screen, but it's really at the unit here that I've got rocking down here that is the main uh, vocal point. So let's have a quick jam with this because I love having a jam. Because uh, at the end of the day, I could just keep going through all of it. I'm mucking around, but I think that's a really nice just little tour and um, example of what it can actually do. And a really good insight for me too, because as I said, I haven't used this interface before and it's pretty cool. So let me set stuff up, 
have a jam and I'll have a bit more of a chat about it uh, on the other side. Time for some final thoughts on the 11 uh, rack unit that I've got there. I'm um, also the final thoughts on the quick overall that we did today with it. So firstly, the interface. I really like the interface. Uh, how they laid out all the different pictures for all the different things, how you can change the, the chain really easily um, and saving the files. Uh, I, had, I just did that quickly uh, before I did the jam to make sure that <laughs> I turned off the interface that it was gonna store it on the unit here and it did. Uh, it was very user friendly and straightforward. Um, I like how you can even double up on some of the effects. Not that you want to, you wouldn't want to have like two of the same choruses going, but it's good that you've got that option so you can swap it around. So one bank you can have it as chorus, next one you could have it as their flange that they had to offer and you're not limited to have to pick one over the other. So that is really cool how they did that. Uh, the bit of noise buzz that I was hearing during it, I'm sure you heard it as well. Just before I started recording, it was frustrating me just a little bit too much. So what I did was I added uh, just a noise killer before going into the unit. So I had my guitar going into here, then into the unit, and that cleaned it up perfectly, which makes me think that the issue is actually sensitive pickups I have on my seven string here over the fact that this unit might be giving off too much uh, unwanted uh, noise. Because I've never, I don't recall that in the past ever happening with that, with that unit having unwanted noise, so I'm happy to blame my sensitive pickups on my guitar for that, and not the unit. And the good thing about doing this was, doing the mix down for the song was super easy because the guitars needed no editing at all. I just panned them and that was it because this took out all the noise, so yeah, I am a big fan of that. Quick story time. When I first got into uh, sound engineering and doing recording, I used to hire out different venues for either a month or a few weeks or however long it might be to do different projects because uh, I needed that space to do acoustic drums and to record um, guitar cabs and all the rest of it. And one of the first studio equipment uh, that I actually bought was the pod. I'm pointing because it's down there. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. I should be able to reach it though. Uh, the pod 2.0 by Line 6. And that pretty much changed my whole approach because from then I didn't have to hire out any venues or anything. I could actually track guitars from home and have it going directly into uh, a mixing console and into my audio interface. And that really opened up so many different avenues for me and ways of approaching and doing things. And uh, I definitely have homed in towards that as my comfort zone over the majority of my sound engineering uh, experience. As you know in these YouTubes, I do like to experiment and go other places and try other things, but going from a, an analog recording um, education on miking up cabs and that and going into the pod was amazing. And then what I wanted to do after that was I wanted to try this 11 rack unit, because I've seen it in a few studios before, to see how much further I could push that digital sound. And this is before um, third party IRs or even IR loaders and all that were a big thing. So this is my next attempt at getting some killer tones purely just from its unit. And I've recorded a few albums with this and I loaned it off to some friends and they did a bunch of recordings for their EPs or albums or whatever they want to do it with or demos. Um, so it definitely is a very, very cool unit. Now you can obviously take things a lot, not really obviously, but with third party IRs and different type of interfaces and hybrid setups, you can come up with some amazing stuff uh, these days, absolutely. But don't want to take anything away from this 11 rack unit because the sounds that I have got from this personally have been awesome and uh, it still sounds pretty decent like throwing the 7 string to it today just doing the quick quick overall and just having a quick look through it um, I was very impressed by it really really cool so yeah I'm definitely going to bring this up on the channel again we'll probably do the next one without the cab and see what it's like adding third party IRs to really do a hybrid setup to see how it goes uh, but yeah, it's a really cool unit, the 11 rack unit. 
And another positive thing which I really like from it, which I kind of said before, but I want to elaborate on it, is the fact that you can just capture the audio uh, straight off the bat. So you get a nice audio WAV file from it, uh, and it's going directly in your desk and no other noise or that. So you can really home in on getting some high gain and some brutal tones without having to rattle the whole house. Rattling the whole house is heaps of fun with the guitar though. I absolutely agree with you on that. But for the practicality of when it comes to home studio work, um, or if you're working many hours in there because you don't want to uh, fatigue your ears too much, uh, I think it's a brilliant option and it's great that we've got those type of options to use. So that's my little rant, little storytelling, and little experience with the 11 rack unit there. Definitely keen for your thoughts. So thank you very much for joining me in this video. I've had a few people comment uh, about this rack unit asking me about it and um, it's definitely overdue for me to do it. So it's lots of fun pulling that out again and turning it on because it hasn't been turned on for a long, long time. Yeah, probably maybe two, three years. <laughs> so yeah, lots of fun going through it again and to muck around with it again. Uh, so thank you very much again for joining me in this video and I really look forward to chatting with you next time. And until next time, Please, stay safe.